G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. But the 3 FUL Lanshan 210 here. So I've had this on my shelf for just over a year now. It came up for sale for roughly half the price, so I bought it. So it's about time that I actually put it up, had a look at it, and see what I think and see how easy it is for the first time. Now it's no poles, you have to use your walking poles to erect this tent. The it's a three season, two person tent and you can change it for a four season inner. The size on the inside is 220 centimeters long by 110 centimeters wide by 125 centimeters in height. The fly sheet is a 15D nylon with a waterproof rating of 4000 millimeters. The inner tent is made out of a high density mesh. The bottom of the tent is a 20D nylon waterproof index of 8000 millimeters, so it's going to be nice and waterproof. It comes in three colors at the time I bought this it's white, green, and khaki. The actual total weight, with the, uh, including stakes and guy ropes, is 1.216 kilograms. So fairly lightweight. So I have seen the older versions in a yellow and I think, I think I'm not certain but they have had other colours I've seen. I think it depends where you buy it from and what part of the world you're from. It comes in a nice compression sack. It will compress down even smaller. But that fits perfect size in the bottom of the pack I'm using today. Some good little bottles on the side here. You can see a tub. They work well, they're pretty strong. They'll do the job. So now that's the basics out of the way, we'll head over there in my usual spot and we'll see how easy and how difficult it is to put up. Now, I'll be honest with you. I can't remember the waterproof rating of the ground sheet. I think it is around the 4,000 millimeter. But with having such a high number on this, I don't think I'm going to get any trouble with water coming through the base of it. And on the corner of the ground sheet, Got some reflectors on these which I'm not keen on really to be honest, just normal would have done me. But have got the pre knotted peg out points on all four corners. We have some lightweight dyneema type cord. So the ground sheet I think weighs about 100, 120 grams so it's not going to add much weight to your pack. All the way around, just giving them all a tug. Got the fly in here and the inner, which I believe is already connected. So that's going to make it easier putting it up. It's just tied up with a bit of nylon webbing. And here's the pegs. Now the bags and everything are pretty high quality. They don't feel cheap at all. Patch for the floor if you get a pinch in that. A couple of guys who go at foot and head end to pull it out. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. 
aluminium pegs by the feel this is it and I like the X we've got four points around so I have some good grip in the ground only small but this part of Australia where I am they'll be okay the further south I'll go I'll get sandier so I may need to replace them but we'll wait and see never had a problem with any of their pegs they're just I know a lot of people put them down and say they're no good but like I said no trouble with them no bending or anything at the moment so there's some pegs I have which will be more expensive and they have bent so they, you can't really complain about these ones let's get them in the pocket at the back and the guys we've got some Reflective line locks, glow in the dark by the looks of it. It'll help reduce the chance of you tripping over them. Next thing is find a bush hammer. I know it can be difficult on this pitch. Uh, yep, this will do. Yeah, sheet first. And normally, they've got a tag on these, or nature height tag, and their tag goes on the top. But there's no tag on here. So what I think we should do is, along the seam here is tape, uh, the seams been taped to make it waterproof. So we'll have the tape up, so you're not going to be wearing that on the ground. I'm going to let the ground sheet do its job. Get a bush hammer. I need to peg out in the ground sheets. On other tents, uh, we normally put them at a 45 degree angle. But watching other people do it, I think the general rule is it's about 22 and a half degree angle here. So, I'll we'll, we'll give it a go. Lucky getting the pegs in today. Yep, the
And we're just these to the longest, so I've got something to give a tug to to tighten them up. And that's just to make it easier for me for adjusting and getting it right. Oh, so this is the first time I've put this one up, but if you follow my channel, you know I've got the the pro version of this as a, uh, one person. So far, so good. Now. Setting the pole to 125 centimetres. Okay, on the top of these, we've got a loop and a reinforced patch which sits on the corner or on the point up here where the tie out goes to. So we're going to put the pole through the loop and up into there. See if we can get it right. Now, most of the way down here, there's a loop, and that's your pegging out point. And this piece has got the ram's head, or ram's, what you call them, ram's horns, or whatever, on it. 
which the cord on the bottom of the doors hook onto. So that will go back now towards the tent. That's the uh, red tail black cockies you can hear. I'm going to be down here about, you know, about 18 inches and lock that in place for now. So I've got adjustment either way. I'm going to see if I've got this right. Slid out the way. We do the other side. I'll be honest, it's not as easy as the one person so far. So what I'll do is I'll go around all the corners and tension it up, make the adjustments, and then I'll walk around with the camera and show you where I've had difficulty and let you know.
do now you see two guys ones that go on either end I'm gonna attach them and peg them out and then we'll look around and on the inside and go from there <laughs> I'll be honest with you it wasn't that easy to get the poles into place and to stay in place even by using the actual loop in there to hold the pole in place it gets slipping past and sliding because this material it's really slippery. What I'm going to do is put these through the loops and do a simple overhand knot, just double one, and that's all. Nothing fancy. picked up and just blew the camera over. Okay, let's have a look now. I think this is the first time I've put this one up. Once some poles were in place it was quite uh, easy. And I have noticed it's a pretty big footprint on this. It takes up a lot of space. So if you're in some of these tent pitches like on the Bubbleman track, you guys are, these ones here, are going to be out of your tent pitch, probably in the vegetation a bit. And the same with this one, it's going to go past a normal two person tent camp pitch. Ah, pretty happy with that so far. Now this is the angle I'd recommend. Now the sun's square, so it's actually less, it's more like 15 degrees, 15 to 17 degrees. And it gave me a nice line going up the tent. And this one was at about the 22 and a half, and it seems to be pulling out a bit more. 
So what we really need to do is have that about here. So let's see if I can pull it out. No. Let's pull that back on for now. And that fades in good and proper. Now, oh. I think I've got that about right. That's about what's that? That's 12, 20, 18, 20 inches I've undone there. And it's given me roughly about the same, uh, the right tension on the door. Maybe you could have done with this being a bit short, uh, shorter. Then it would have allowed that to go a bit further. Would have pulled it a little bit tighter. That's something I'll remember next time. Now this, where you pull out from, people think it's just tied onto this here, but it's not. It's got a, a reinforcement coming up here, all the way up to the top. It's about that wide, all the way up. So that's actually spreading the tension. This, where am I? Give it, yeah, give it a little bit tighter. I think that would be good. This tag here, I have seen people bring a guy up to it and use that to give it a little bit more stability in the wind. It's actually there, so if you're not going to be using your poles, you can tie that up with a piece of power cord string up to a tree branch or run a ridge line between the two trees and just have that on a couple of pussock knots holding it up and then you don't need the walking pole on the inside yeah I like it, I do like it I'm going to have to use it a few times to know for sure but yeah personally I think this line at the head end could probably be a little bit longer to allow more of a pull out to be the actual angle of the rope going down won't be as um, steep it'll be a lot more shallow I'll come out here and that means it'll pull this piece higher but as it is it's okay the doors we've got stiffeners in there and storm flaps zips only and zip to about this point here we've got two pieces of velcro and see we've got the ram's horns here that they're attached to some people have said they break but we'll see if it does I'll just put a carabiner and I'll just use a carabiner we have ventilation here I don't know if you can see in there we've got the mesh Now there's a bit of airflow to come from this side all the way through to reduce the chance of condensation. Now I've got the pole set at 125 and looking at this the vestibule doors are fairly high up, they're about 8 to 10 inches away from the floor as they sit at this point. That's about 3 inches up there on each corner, it's about two and a half of that one to ground is not 100% level. This one's even higher. I could go around and loosen the back ones and tighten these ones back up. So again we've got the stiffener here, the Velcro, the ram's horn here. And like I said with the reinforcement, the mesh in there. So, a little toggle there for when you open your door to hook the loop over it to hold your door open. That could be a little bit tighter, but going by what I've seen, people have said that's about it. It just takes the sag out of it. We've still got the, the sag in it, the angle. I've seen people try and pull in straight, but you can see the strain on it. And I'll pull these a little bit tight and see what happens.
just tightened one off, it's made it a bit better. Let's do this side now. That's better. And so you can just feel the tension in it. All I do is pull them an extra inch on either side. Let's go on the inside and have a look. I'm going from this way today. It's going to be easier. If I want to do the zip, I'll take it off the ram's horn. So there's going to be nothing to stop me. And this makes it easier because the zip's holding it in place while it's done up. And here's the loop on the inside. I've done about that will tie up to your toggle. And this material <laughs> is slippy. It's not like the old canvas tents. We backed up. It looks about, about six inches in height. My KK zippers. The J door works pretty okay, one handed. Again, we've got a toggle here and a loop on the inside. Hold the bug mesh open. And it's holding it high. That's as far as I get in. That's going to come down a bit. Now, as a lot of you know, I'm only five foot six, and sitting off to the side here, I've got the the bog net is about half an inch, but one centimeter away from my head here. But if I'm sitting in the middle, yeah, <laughs> got plenty of room there for me. Now, here you go. Here's the space above my head. <laughs> it's a big amount for me. I'm going to be able to get change in here easy. It's got only the one pocket, which is up here. So I take it this is going to have to be the head end. I'll take that tag off. Uh, yeah, I always take the tags off to see the pain they do to me. Hey, corners. Oh. Reinforced and taped. Same there. So if you're going to get any splash, there's nothing going to come through the stitching of the corners. Same on that side. You can see there, these are the foot and head end. That's hooked to the point I pulled out, which is allowing us to have a lot more space. I think if that weren't there, yeah, it's given us about five or six more inches to stop it hang down in your face. We've got one hook this side and another hook that side. So we could put a washing line up there. Or a little ridge line. We've got the panels head and foot end. And coming down at an angle for the corner. So if you're going to get any head or foot wind it's not really going to be hitting you when you're asleep. For the price, I can see why people rave about it and like it. The, the stitching, the construction is pretty good. All the seams to the outside on the flyer tape seemed made it waterproof. Ah, uh, that breeze coming through now, it's lovely. You can actually feel the breeze coming all straight through. So that's a good test. When the wind blows, it's going to be nice coming through that way. Keep you cool at night. 
And this is like the three season one with the, the mesh in it. I did buy the four season inner, which I won't need to put in now because we're in spring and we're what uh, today is the forecast 28 degrees centigrade, and we're only a week into spring. A week or two, two. Oh, yeah, we're, we're only at the beginning of spring, and it's 28 degrees centigrade today. What I might do is make another video about how to install the inner, uh, the four season, replace the bug mesh, to see how easy it is. Because like I said, apart from the poles, everything else is easy. So I think I'm going to have to practice two or three more times to get that bit right of how to get the poles in place, the walking poles. It feels, now it's all done, it feels nice and sturdy. I think I could take a bit of a battering in the wind. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it, but like I said, after I've used it a few times, I'll do a, another review of it, uh, an update. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, and you're not already a subscriber, please go down below and click on the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell next to it and select all so you can be notified of all future videos. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. And go and hit that like button.